What is up, everybody? Welcome back here to the Dever Out YouTube channel. We're back with another rookie mock. These are my favorite things to do. 2024 rookie mock draft. Going over of all the people that have declared now, we kind of have an understanding of all the players that are there. J.J. McCarthy, Blake Corum, all of these guys are like, hey, they're coming back. We have some guys going back to college, so we kind of weeded those out. So we're going to do a three-round mock. We're going to be talking about value and trades as well. So what are these picks worth right now in your dynasty drafts as the dynasty season kind of keeps rolling? You're going to see some picks get moved. So what could you get? maybe these picks for and then we're gonna be looking at the best players available based on after the third round who are some guys in the senior bowl who might pop off who are some seniors out there that might pop off so we're gonna be diving into the rookie draft we're gonna be having fun the player spotlights all of the above so let's get started let's look at the first round right now caleb's the 101 in super flex that's pretty much just consensus that's what you're looking at um, i think there's some off-field noise that i don't think you have to be concerned about too much but it's there i think you know off-field stuff you're hearing rumors all that stuff that's just the nature of the beast when it comes to drafts right now but to me everybody knows that he's 101 then 102 we know it marvin harrison jr finally declared you know all the dice managers can exhale a little bit so those are your two that's your tier right 101 102 that's really where we've been not going to spend a ton of time on them until we start understanding kind of landing spot how they'll be used those type of things but those are your first two picks then with a the shocker we got jane daniels at the 103 this is the highest i've seen jane daniels doing one of our mocks that we do on our patreon and you know for some of our youtube subscribers that want to join and you know i think the upside is there. Rushing ability, landing spot, maybe a top 10 pick. Um, improved his, his deep ball throughout every year of his college career. You see that. Now, the question for me that I have for you guys out there watching, are you comfortable taking Jaden Daniels or Drake May? Who would you rather want right now in that process? Do you think Jaden Daniels is a better fantasy asset or do you think Drake May is, right? Those are the questions you have to know. Let me know in the comments. Jaden or Drake? Just put it. Drake or Drake? Uh, Drake? Uh, don't do that. Jaden or Drake? You may, like, right? Who you want? Who do you think is the better quarterback for your dynasty roster, but also with longstanding value? Then we have at the 104 is Drake May, right? So 6'4", 220, getting Herbert vibes out there and a little bit of Herbert comps. You know, not the greatest year from a statistical standpoint this season, but has done enough to prove that he probably should be in that category of being a top five pick. So do you think Drake May should be that guy um, ahead of Jaden Daniels? Who, where are you at in that one? Then we have Malik Neighbors sitting at 105. You know, I'm hearing a little buzz from the Giants out there. So, you know, are you comfortable drafting him if he goes to the New York Giants? Or are you like, man, I'm a little nervous about that landing spot. Will that be enough to pump him down a little bit? Maybe Roman Dunze gets a better landing spot and you bump him up. Where are you at with Malik Neighbors? I still think 105 is a perfect evaluation for him right now before we know where he is drafted. 106 is Brock Bowers, and I think we're starting to hear a little bit of rumblings now. Kyle Pitts makes people nervous. We're supposed to be this you know, quintessential top five player as soon as he was a rookie. He hasn't delivered. What about Brock Bowers? Everybody's saying the same thing. You look at his size. I saw some, you know, some tweets out there, some things about Brock Bowers of like, hey, what is he going to, can he withstand NFL defenses? Can he block, do those things? I, I would be shocked to see Bowers not take a little bit hit in the draft in terms of that, or just in terms of value for dynasty. I like Bowers, but again, there's a very good group of, you know, players around this, my, this kind of pick. Maybe you go out and you grab at 107, Roma Dunze, right? If you can get Rome, would you rather have Rome or would you have Brock Bowers? And I think Rome is the interesting one. People either love him um, in terms of they think he's going to be that guy or they're a little nervous about his profile. But two years, and again, one thing to, to note, Washington runs with Kalen DeBoer there. Well, now he's at Alabama. But when he was there, they run a very pro style offense in terms of their receivers and routes and all their concepts. I think Rome's going to come in very ready to go in terms of what the NFL offense is going to ask him to do. So that's another thing to note about Rome's profile is that people are going to, he's going to be ready to go. He's going to be ready to step in day one. Now, 108 is Troy Franklin, Oregon wide receiver. Some people don't think he can be a wide receiver one. Some people think he's just a wide receiver two. I think he has good value. He's improved 1300 yards, 14 touchdowns. Uh, back into the first is where he's getting mocked a lot too, like Dallas and those places would be fun landing spot there. 109 is Xavier Worthy, quick, shifty, can create separation, did declare, so we're excited about that. I think back into the first would be great, great value for Xavier. 110, we got J.J. McCarthy. Now, this guy's going to be debated all draft process. 63202, number's never going to be huge for him. Almost 3,000 yards passing, 22 touchdowns, four interceptions. Now, you're going to be able to tell real quick who watched J.J. for his whole career, like career like I have. 
since high school and guys that have just watched like the playoff, right? He doesn't, he didn't stand out in those games, but he's 27 and one back to back to back big 10 champion. Those things do matter. Dane Brugler talks about it. And as much as you don't care about it, I see all the people on social media say QB is not a win, you know, wins in our QB stat, all of that. In college, they look at that leadership tangibles, and I know they see that JJ has tools, and they think they can mold him. Now, this is a perfect chance for JJ to go to the NFL, get coached, and I. It was it's hard to believe that no one in the back end of the first that needs a quarterback will not draft him, right? Or they come up and move up. The Rams, the Vikings, someplace where he might have to sit for a year to develop. I think JJ is probably a back end first round quarterback, probably as long as the process plays out. I think he'll do great in interviews. So it's just something to know. 111 is Keon Coleman. You either love Keon or hate him. That's really the, the issue with Keon. I think late first is probably 111, 112 would be a little nerve wracking for me to take him in that spot. That's where he went in this mock. But, you know, it really depends on what you believe in that profile. And then we have Brian Thomas Jr., 6'4", 205. When you're thinking of what Brian Thomas Jr. has been able to do, you know, he got overshadowed by Malik Neighbors. He's going to come in. I've seen him mocked all the way in the first round. So this just shows you the depth of that wide receiver class. Now, as far as trades, so where are people going right now? 2021st trades that we're seeing out there for, for guys, 102 and 310 for Bijan Robinson. So Bijan's really in, in the 101. He's getting valued in that 101, 102 mark, right? So, you know, I think the question is, would you rather have Bijan Robinson and Marvin Harrison Jr. or Bijan Robinson or Caleb Williams? Where are you at with those, those areas? I, I always take the quarterback, right? Caleb Williams for Bijan. Um, but the Marvin Harrison Jr. one is interesting, right? Right now, would you rather have which one of those guys? That's where Bijan's getting valued at. Right. And I just show you these trades to give you concept, context and kind of give you an idea of where these guys are going. Uh, JSN, Kincaid, and Perry for Pitts, Kendra, and the 108. So, with the 108, combine that with a couple of prospects that you're hoping to break out. Could you get JSN, Dalton, Perry? And I think, or Dalton, Kincaid, and Perry. I think Perry is an interesting stash. So, that's a fairly good value right there. I really like that value uh, for these guys. Now, next one that I saw 107, 202, and 411 for 111 and Bryce Young. Again, if you're looking to tear up a little bit, you're you're going to get rid of Bryce Young. You're like, hey, I don't want him anymore. Sit in that 107 mark. Maybe draft a quarterback. Maybe Jaden falls there. Maybe Drake. Maybe one of these guys. Interesting. 108 for Drake London. London's going around that 108 mark. So just for you to know. And then 105 for Pollard and Cook. I love that deal for the 105 side. Um, I, I think Pollard is a really depreciated asset. I think James Cook's a running back too. You get in that 105 tier. You get neighbors sitting there. You get Bowers. You get Rome. Uh, possibly one of those other quarterbacks maybe falls there. That's a lot of fun. I think that's a pretty good value for those guys. Now, where are we looking at when we're talking about, you know, round two? We got Braylon Allen, Wisconsin running back. We got A.D. Mitchell, 202, Xavier Leggett, Bucky Irving, Jalen Polk, and Michael Penix Jr. The one thing I will say is Jalen Polk is underrated, underrated. Go check out Jalen Polk's, you know, in terms of his, his tape, everything there. Absolutely smashed Jalen Polk at 206. 205. That's a great, great pick there. Then we got Ladd McConkey, Jatavian Sanders, Jalen Wright, Trey Benson, Marshawn Lloyd, and Jalen McMillan. So you're going to see a lot of running backs in this kind of time frame because the running backs narrative is that it's bad. Travion Henderson went back to school. Now you're going to see one of those running backs. Now there's one running back that I think that you should know. Jalen Wright, Tennessee running back, right? So, you know, 91.2 PFF run grade, almost 600 yards after contact. 43 tackles forced, uh, missed tackles forced. Explosive runs is 35. His elusive rating in PFF is 132.2. You have to like that. Kind of played in a split backfield uh, with Jabari Small, but hey, look at the numbers. More efficient this last year. 1,000 yards, four touchdowns, 22 catches as well. He's the guy to watch. Senior Bowl, he's the guy to watch in the combine. He's the one that could really pop off and really increase his value. And I know everybody's down on this class, but guys like Jalen Wright make it a little bit more exciting, especially when you're looking at rushes by direction. Now, the reason why I like to see this and to show you kind of where those things are is, you know, he's he can kind of, he did it all, every spot, you know, every direction that he needed to run the ball um, based on this. And you can kind of pause the video and look at it. Yards per attempt are there. Yards after contact was really, really good. Uh, middle right. I mean, he's an inside out runner. So you like that downhill guy. Um, you have to love what he did by his rushes by direction um, and his ability just to kind of break things long. And you see kind of his, you know, his, where he really, excel that in between the tackles. And I think if you're looking for a dynasty asset in between the tackles, that's what you're looking for. Now, as far as what the draft picks are going for, you know, 
Aaron Jones, Geno Smith, all early, you know, in the in a 201 to two, 205 mark. Isaiah likely in tight end premium. You know, thinking about what you just saw there in that second round, not a ton of tight ends in this class. It's not a deep tight end area. Jatavian Sanders is sitting there. Uh, but this generally just gives you an idea of what those rookie picks are going for. You know, Joe Mixon as well. So the running backs are really where you're getting those veteran running backs right now getting moved for. And all of these deals have been made in the last like two days. All right. So that's kind of just to give you context, not taking something from December, right? We're taking it from this offseason so far. A second for Jerome Ford. I kind of like it in a second there. Not going to lie. If I can ship off Jerome Ford for a second, I would love to re-roll that pick. Uh, Trey Palmer in a second for Keenan Allen. Again, if you're buying on Allen, you think that he could be that guy next year for a contender. A second of Palmer isn't too much to kind of throw at, at at that manager to see what, what would stick, right? Now, as far as the third round. So as we get into this third round here, and we're looking kind of at values and what it looks like, Blake Corum is going to be the hard one to judge. Some people love Blake Corum. They think he's running back one. Some people don't, right? So 301 is an interesting evaluation. Uh, Tez Walker from UNC. Malachi Corley from Western Kentucky. Audrey Estime from Notre Dame. Jace McClellan from Alabama. Jacob Cowing, wide receiver from Arizona. Now, when you're looking at the next part of this round, Jonathan Brooks, you know, he tore his ACL, but he did enter the draft. Kendall Milton, running back from Georgia. Will Shipley from Clemson, Roman Wilson from Michigan, Ania Smith from Texas A&M, and Rasheen Ali from Marshall, getting a small school guy in there. I do want to highlight Jace McClellan. So Jace McClellan is a running back from um, Alabama. He is just going to be that downhill guy, right? 84.5 PFF run grade, you know, 581 yards after contact, 49 missed tackles for explosive runs was 26. Elusive rating wasn't really there, but at times he did show the value of just having that downhill guy. And I'm going to tell you the comp form. It's Brian Robinson. I know that's cheating. I know that's because he went to Alabama. But if you're looking at what Brian Robinson's doing in the league right now, I think Jace could do that too. I like Jace as a as a sleeper, as a prospect of like someone that you're like, oh, I think he could have value there. Um, Jace is a lot of fun. I think there's a lot of fun value in that third round with the running backs and wide receivers. Now, as far as trades go, so where are these guys getting traded to, right? So where are we looking at in terms of like, what are some value out there? Marvin Mims going for a third. Dontavian Wicks going for a third. Take Bigsby. So essentially, you're re-rolling your thirds for thirds that you probably picked last year. Wicks might be the one I hold on to, though. If it's a late third, I don't mind taking a shot on Wicks. A lot of fun, you know, former um, Virginia guy. And then you got Jalen Hyatt. A.T. Perry is the one that I would actually probably take there. Gabe Davis. I will say this in one of my leagues. Before the season ended, I shipped Rashad Bateman for a, th for a third. To me, he was a roster clogger, and I just got rid of him. I didn't need him. He was like my seventh wide receiver. So this is a time to cut, maybe re-roll some of those wide receivers. You're not really those roster clogging guys that you're like, hey, I can just get him off my roster now for that third. So that could be the value that you're looking for. Now, best players available in this draft after the third round. Bo Nix, I didn't get him in the third, top three rounds. I know people are going to be mad about that, but he's probably the best available. Then you have Hartman, Milton, Brennan Armstrong, Spencer Rattler, Michael Pratt are all guys to kind of keep an eye on. It really depends where you're at with Bo Nix. Some people like Bo uh, a lot. Some people are like, hey, I think he's a very fine backup. I think I have him as a backup right now. Um, running back, Ray Davis is a guy to probably note. Montreal G Johnson Jr., Jawar Jordan, Cody Schrader is getting a little buzz out there. Carson Steele, UCLA running back. And Imani Bailey is a guy I really like from TCU. Uh, fourth round value, if you can get him in the fourth round, go check him out. A lot of fun to watch. Wide receiver Jermaine Burton didn't get in the top three, but this just shows you the depth of this class. Jermaine Burton, Isaiah Williams, Malik Washington, Johnny Wilson, Ricky Persaw, uh, Marcus Rosemace, Jack Saint. Those guys are very good. Like you're talking about just could have an NFL profile, NFL body. They they could definitely do it for you. And in tight ends, Bryson Nesbitt from North Carolina, Ben Snott, Cade Stover, Brevin Span Ford, Theo Johnson. And then Dallin Holker is an interesting one. Dallin's a, a small school guy, but could have some run there. Very good pass blocker. So when you're talking about pass blocking um, and run blocking, like Dallin Holker is that guy um, that probably going to get more run as just a blocker. But tight ends, as you can tell, aren't the best indication of like this class this class is not very tight and heavy so again i appreciate you guys tuning in the mock hope is a lot of hope you guys got some enjoyment from it but also just knowledge of these guys now where's the values at where's the strengths of the class and what the picks are worth if you're starting to move now this is not the time to be you know taking a break in dynasty 
re-roll those picks. Get those roster cloggers off your uh, off your roster early, right? And just really attack that. We have a new show coming on here on the channel this week for Dynasty. So go check that out. We're going to be really called Deciphering Dynasty, kind of talking about that. Um, if you're new to Dynasty, the format, definitely tune in. So appreciate you guys. I'll check you guys next time. Thank you.